I became a musician when I was a baby. I started listening seriously to classical music as a three-year-old, and uh, I believe that's because I could feel what its development and emotional content was doing to my soul, and I really wanted to follow that journey. And so I was given piano lessons. My parents gave me piano lessons thinking, well, what, where is this guy headed? And I was too shy to practice in the living room. I learned some things, but I just couldn't practice enough because I didn't, couldn't handle practicing in front of the people who were watching over me. When I was 11, I picked up the flute. I played in school band some, and I wanted to be able to have an instrument I could take where I wouldn't be heard and experiment. So the first time I really experimented with music was with the flute when I was 11. I'd go out in the woods and try to figure things out by ear. And I've done that ever since. It's just sort of part of my musical world. One time around 1980, I was performing flute and singing with uh, a trio I was in at a college dorm at William & Mary, where we had all graduated from. And uh, when we were packing up, a guy pulled out a hammer dulcimer and started playing. And I had no idea what it was. And I was just frozen with rapt attention, couldn't breathe. And then my brother, who was a student at the college at the time, came over for dinner and showed us a record he had gotten of a hammer dulcimer player who had visited the college, someone different. And we borrowed the record and started collecting recordings. And I thought maybe someday I'll uh, play myself. And then eight years later, I got my first dulcimer. <laughs> There are two instruments called dulcimer, and they're not the same. And so I want to clarify, uh, one of them that people usually call the dulcimer is a little uh, guitar-like instrument that you set on your lap. That actually adopted the name about 100 years ago. It was called the Scheitholt before that. It was a German instrument. The hammered dulcimer is the one that used to be called the hammered, or the dulcimer. and it has many strings and you hit them with little hammers and you move around from string to string. It probably was invented in the ancient Persian Empire. Uh, it came to America in the 1600s here at Jamestown. Uh, it was popular in America for 300 years, died away, and most people don't even know it exists now in America. And so I'm constantly in introducing it to people. It was the in inspiration for the invention of the piano around 1700. People said, let's make, take the keyboard idea we've been using for the organ and the harpsichord and apply it in a much more complex way to having hammers hit strings like the dulcimer does. The ringing combination of percussion and ringing is like nothing else you've heard. It's uh, powerful and at the same time sweet. And uh, standing right over it as the player, the sound comes projecting right into your face. Not too many instruments have that type of thing. Usually the sound's away somewhere, a guitar or the sound goes out away. But with this, I can pound on it, get whatever percussion I want, and the sound just comes up in my face and it's very enjoyable and dynamic. Uh, but people standing away from the instrument often call it soft and soothing, even if I'm pounding. 
to many people when they first see a hammer dulcimer, they go, how do you ever play that great mass of strings? It must take ages to learn it. And I say, no, it really only takes a couple minutes to learn it. So if you don't know about it yet, you're about to learn all there is to know about scales on the hammer dulcimer. I've taught lessons to players of my instruments and to people who want to learn some about music theory and things like that uh, for probably, I don't know, 35 years, something like that. These are called hammers. They're made out of wood. They have suede on one side and bare wood on the other in this particular model. The uh, strings are laid out in such a way that you have a separate string for each note. So it's not like a guitar or violin where you use your fingers to make the strings longer and shorter, but you have longer and shorter strings. I don't think people should, nobody should have to just be tied to the page and try to replicate something that's on a page of sheet music. You need to somehow have a way of coming up with other things on your own. And I have all sorts of ways that can stimulate people to do that because I want to really inspire people to be musical and not just to kind of learn some technique. But I want to in inspire people to really be themselves in a way that doesn't have to follow a particular path that is the usual expectation. And so uh, I think part of it, as I've gotten older and studied things, I think part of it is I'm Scots-Irish. And as a Scots-Irishman, I was raised to not follow the crowd. And I'm realizing this is something handed down through the generations. Don't just do fads, come up with something really unique and special. And I've been doing that all my life, and I thought, I bet you that's part of all of this. To see a teenager pick up something that you know it, they are going to run with and see them really focus on it with purpose and with a good attitude. And you can't ever expect that from anybody, but to see that happen, I've had some students who learn how to use a multi-track recording studio and set up microphones to really capture a particular kind of stereo effect and then compose a piece and then do the entire ensemble themselves with guitar and piano and singing and perhaps some other things and then work on getting that final mix and then use use that as an expression of who they are uh, which of course is what i do <laughs> to see someone else who's growing up who really wants to uh to do that same kind of thing and to do it with meaning not just demonstrating that they can do it but but to really have a context and a meaning I am thinking in terms of uh, love for my family or something like that and how I really appreciate something and I'm pulling the music into that thought process, that world. And I hope that people who listen to it will sense this is not just background music, this is not just uh, I'll say it again, entertaining. Uh, this, there's something going on here. I sense that there's an interrelatedness of everything and and as a believer in God, I believe that, that there is a, a form, an order to everything that was made that is very dynamic and meaningful, and there are many interrelations, and you can see it everywhere. And with music, there's a microcosm and a macrocosm where there's, th there's a moving through time as a horizontal factor, and there's a rise and fall of frequency as a 
the pitches as a vertical factor that work together to draw through a process over time, just like our lives have these processes as we move through time. There are the ups and downs and there are all sorts of different tonal qualities to our lives and, and so forth. There's a whole lot more I could say, but uh, instrumental music can really tap into that and somehow draw together the meanings of the universe and our individual personal souls and experiences. And I really want my music to tap in really well there.